So I posted a photo on Instagram probably like a week ago. I'm just inside the picture in here so you can see what I'm talking about. The amount of kind of comments and just requests that I got to recreate this was crazy. That is what I did in today's video. I actually think, annoyingly, this always fucking happens. When I did it the first time round, five million times better. I feel like the wing and everything doesn't look as dramatic or as like juicy. Do you know what I mean? But whatever. It's my take on that sort of like fox eye trend, but it's like a really dramatic wing, fluffy brows, full coverage skin, glossy lip. Also faux freckles as well, just to kind of add even more to the look. I have to say this is probably, probably one of my favorite looks I've done in a while. I used all my favorite products at the moment. I even put in drugstore alternatives, check the description box, I'll leave it there. These products are good as shit, okay? But I'm fully aware that not everybody has the pennies to spend like everything high end, I get it. I also included a mini toots on this hair as well, how I have, my hair's like this short, how I get it in. <laughs> this kind of section of me hair, I mean, if you wanna know how I did it, just keep watching, it's that easy, that's simple. Okay, let's get to it. I've actually been doing my makeup routine like very different. Weird, I know, I don't know what's come over me, but I'm switching things up, new bitch. Also, yes, right now we have a lot going on. <laughs> Breakouts left, right and center, literally stress is taking over my life. Um, yes, I've been having emotional breakdowns, but I'm fine. <laughs> and you know what, before I put my face, I'm gonna include in the mini toots of my hair. When I put this on Instagram, you guys were literally tripping out because I think so many of you were like hella confused at how my hair's so short, but I got it so like, up. It's easy, let's roll the clip. These breakouts really do be crazy though. I'm on probably like three, four day old hair at this point. Gross. But to be fair with this hairstyle, right, the greasier the better. Why? Because it would just look more like slicked. Like it looked more like. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gather my hair onto the top of my head, preparing it for like a pony. Grab my hairbrush and just start smoothing everything out. Personally, when I do this to my hair, I like everything to be super slick. It's kind of like a facelift without the injections. Like, watch. Different human. <laughs> See, this is the problem that we come across when we have short hair, all these bits that don't go in. So many of you were like hella confused at how I have such short hair that managed to get it all up. This is your best friend. The Got To Be Blasting Freeze Spray. This hairspray, seriously, this bitch freezes. This, your hair won't go anywhere. Brush it flat against your head. I even use my hand as well. Kind of hold it while it's drying. Y'all see that? F having 5,000 grips in our hair. And then take a hairband, tie all of this up into a high pony. Put it tight. I go in with one more hairband above it for extra security and also it gives me a little bit more height. All these tight if you can't like feel your face being like lifted it's not tight enough you need to keep going her spray does a lot of the work but i do take a couple extra grips these are the same colors as my hair just in the back to make sure it's not going anywhere like literally like two for the actual bun i just give my hair a little light twist and then wrap it around and i mean where my hair's short as you can see it kind of has like a mind of its own <laughs> keep playing around with it to get it how you like grip it in place i put like a few grips in because yeah Last couple of things, so I take this by Mark Hill. This is their Mirror Coilless Glass Finish Shine Spray. I like to use this on my roots to kind of flatten them. Final thing, I take the Got To Be Glued. <laughs> Why does mine look like that? Gross. <laughs> a little bit on the spoolie. My baby hairs are a little crazy, so I just use this to kind of glue them down. Not really like shape them as such. I feel like it like, makes my forehead look a little bit smaller too. <laughs> there you go, that is it. Um, honestly, this is so easy. I can do this in like five, 10 minutes. If you have short hair, you can Wear it up too. Sweet, let's get back to the bit. Right, so first thing I like to do before I do anything is of course brows, just to kind of get them done. I use the Got To Be Glue. This stuff genuinely sticks my brows down like no other. They are not going anywhere. It's better than any eyebrow gel or anything I've ever used. And it's hella cheap and look how much you get. Mad. What I like to do is take a little bit of the glue on a spoolie, starting at the front of my eyebrow. I just comb this through. A spoolie is really important because it's really gonna get it in between the eyebrow hairs. The real magic starts to happen when this shit starts to dry down let me tell you i also use my finger as well to just press that down to make sure they're flat to my skin spoolie run it across the top of your brow you see that just flattens them down and shapes them they still look fluffy but they're just like a more chill version of wait for this to dry you want the product to be completely set before you go in with any other product otherwise it won't adhere to your skin properly cool now that that's done we want to go in and start carving everything out i'm using the p louise base just because i prep my lids with this as well but honestly you can use a concealer it's up to you but this is this is good this is in rumor 2 by the way and this brush this is the morphe m421 this line will outline your shape so focus on what you want feel like already that looks, it looks more filled in. It's so weird. I like a bit of a, um, like a, a straighter brow as well. So the tail of it, I just kind of like pull this way rather than down. 
just lift everything. I'm gonna fill everything in now. I'm actually using an hourglass eyebrow pencil. This is the Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil in Ash. Keeping it real. Make Revolution do a really good one. It's like four pounds. I run out of that, so I'm using this. <laughs> Just saying like you don't have to spend like a shit ton like you can save your coins all that I do is I guess you can kind of see right any sort of sparse areas I fill in almost forgot didn't I wipe off any excess got to be glue extend the tail and I just with little hair like strokes fill in the end flick a few little flicks through the front that is actually it that's all I do I don't go crazy I don't do the most for me it's the tail of my eyebrow that I saw off I'm that bitch that shapes off the tail of her eyebrow <laughs> I like to lift it up so that's where I kind of fill in but obviously stick to your shape do your own thing you know your brows are done the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna do eyes like i said we're gonna prep with the p louise base so i'm just gonna take a little bit on there and basically just start painting fyi you don't actually need a lot of this a little bit goes a long way and i also take it right into this inner corner and all the way to my temple we literally want to cover this entire thing to get like a really nice blank canvas the eyeshadow palette of choice i love these. <laughs> this brand, I think, actually has my favorite eyeshadow formula ever. I just think they're so good. This is the Be Perfect Clientele palette. It is beautiful. I feel like if someone said to me, like, George, gun to my head, pick an eyeshadow palette to use for the rest of your life. Hello, easy. <laughs> we all know for this look, everything's just super winged out and kind of just like pulled back. So I'm gonna start with a wing liner brush. This is the Zoe the 317, if you're wondering. And I'm gonna dip into too much, which is the really dark brown. First step, all we're gonna do, we're gonna map out that wing shape. I actually follow my lower lash line. So instead of starting right in the inner corner up here, bring it slightly lower and follow that lash line. This is gonna help with that like look, you know? then pull it back i only put it back till about halfway through through my eye <laughs> when not going through my eyeball halfway into my lid always remember that when we start blending this out everything's gonna go like wider and higher keep it a bit lower like it's a bit safer should i zoom you in a little more that might be a bit more helpful there you go got this star wing shape here so now i'm gonna dip into dirty tan and brownie on a flat shader brush the top ledge the top ledge <laughs> Right, you know what I'm trying to say. I kind of pat it on and then start to kind of buff out. We don't want any harsh lines. We're using this color to really buff out any harsh edges. Do not be afraid as well to take that shit back to your temple. Further back you take it, the more snatch this is going to look. Tap in, buff again, keep buffing to your arm fucking hurts. Now, to be fair, these eyeshadows kind of do all the work for you. You know what I mean? Like they just blend like a dream. Now I'm going in with a clean buffing brush. This is by NYX. This is one of my favorite ones. This is the 16 brush. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> this here, bye bitch. We do not want her there. Look, look at that already. I'm lightly buffing this out. I'm actually holding the end of the brush to get really light pressure. And now that I've done this, to be honest, all that I do is kind of go back and forth between the colors to get it how I want. Pretty much it's almost there, but adding a second layer to this is gonna intensify even more. So I'm gonna go back in with that dark brown, redefine that shape. Then I'm gonna go back in with the mid-tones to blend out, then the clean brush to go through. You kind of, that three-step process, keep repeating it. Hopefully now you'll have something that looks like this. Not completely finished, but we're getting there. Real quick, I'm just going to go do this eye, just so I can kind of get them even, because the next step, you're probably going to be like, huh? At the fact that I'm doing it, but like, it will make sense. <laughs> I'm going to go get painting. Be right back. Right, this is so random, and I feel like so many of you are going to be like, Huh? This order of doing my makeup, I've never done it before, but like ever since I've been doing it, I get sharper makeup looks. My, I tend to get less oily as well, which is mad because I'm like fucking the oiliest person in the world. And it just sits nicer i don't know right so i actually do my prepping of my skin right now this is the elf matte putty primer i've been trying to get my hands on this for so long finally they have a luminous one as well and an original i used to use the original but found that i was getting quite oily here so i've got the matte one now take some onto my pores press that in i'm literally focusing on the center here this is just where my pores are most visible when i press it to really kind of get it in there i know that sounds gross but like true we're doing this because i'm actually going to do my concealer now i know Crazy. Doing this now for two reasons. Number one, we're gonna carve out this. Number two, we can get right in here and all the way underneath here so we can finish off the eye. I'm using this. I've been loving this. This is so good. Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Concealer. I'm in 2N, which is light, no, light medium neutral. This is my most satisfying thing, literally ever. Now, I'm gonna pop it every. I'm generous with this. Don't come for me. I know this looks mad. Trust the process. 
ladies and gents. Then take your wet sponge. I'm gonna spray a little bit of setting spray on there as well. This is the Scandinavia one. Bounce this into the skin. What you really wanna do though is make sure that any of these edges here are really blended out. Otherwise what's gonna happen is this is gonna set and then when you try to blend in your foundation, you're gonna get some clinging. But if you really buff out those edges so it's completely blended into your skin, you're not gonna get that. See that, see that? Mental. Is it just me, right? Or is that always one eye that's better than the other? I feel like this one looks way better than this one. I don't know. One of them's playing in me, okay? Then you've got to hop onto the powder because we need to set this so it doesn't crease like a biatch. Let me see, a new makeup product makes me feel some type of way, man. This is probably my favorite setting powder that I've ever used, along with Laura Mercier, but this it's different. The iHeart Revolution Banana Scented Baking Powder. This, I have never known a powder. Oh my god, cute. It's actually pretty decent to me. <laughs> Normally I'm like, hmm, but I'm like, keep it. Nah. I've never known a powder to just smooth onto your skin beautifully. Nothing has ever made my skin look like this product does. And it's so cheap. Get rid of any creasing. Dip in, pop it right underneath the eye. Just underneath the eye though. Don't bring it down here. We don't wanna set this yet because we're gonna add more products. Just right underneath here though where it creases like a mofo. Just like that, which I know that looks crazy right now, but um, it's fine. While we're here, let's finish the eyes. So I'm gonna go back into the clientele palette. Take that too much shade on my wing liner brush. This inner corner we wanna extend just to really get that feline shape. Imagine just bringing out this corner a little bit further and then bring it back in basically creating like a mini triangle then on a morphe e22 which is like a denser fluffier brush take sandy which is this one here i'm gonna imagine that my nose is following around into my eye and i'm just gonna lightly use this to contour the shape of my eye a little bit more i feel like otherwise this bit's quite bare i don't know if you guys can see the difference but it just adds i don't know another shadow i just kind of like the way this looks you know you know and then stamp some dark brown underneath our eye as well Cool. Mascara and lashes to finish off. I'm actually just taking this. It's the Maybelline Colossal, to be honest. I can't use anything just to make my lashes black. Not a big deal. Maybelline mascaras though. Okay, I'm not gonna trip. If you wanna drug some mascara, Maybelline is where it's at. These are my lash of choice. These are beautiful. I'm pretty sure these are the Tarty Lashes in TL6. They're the ones that kind of like wing out. They're so fluffy. Shorter in the middle and just wing out at the end. Like I just, with this look, if you don't know, get to know. Lash glue, this is the, oh my God. Got a bit of lash just chilling on there. <laughs> the AOA Studio Lash Adhesive. This is so good. This is my like, all-time favorite lash glue. Also have a new trick for my lashes. So do one coat, let it dry. After about 30 to 45 seconds, what you actually wanna do is add another layer of glue. So you've got tacky glue, new layer of glue. Wait for that to go tacky, then stick it on. Your lashes are not gonna move. The inner corner is not gonna budge up. I am telling you, this, this is like the new thing for lashes. Two layers of glue, the best. This outer corner, don't attach it. Like, cause you know your eye shape, it kind of goes like round. Don't attach it to your lash line, bring it up higher, kind of in with the wing. Your lash ends up laying flatter, which means it kind of curves with it. Squeeze everything together. Look at that. I just realized I actually had lower lash mascara in the photo. So let's add a little bit as well. Who freaking is she adding lower lash mascara? Like, on a real note. Now onto skin. So I'm gonna add a little bit of primer just because I feel like doing these two steps really helps with the longevity of my makeup. The Ordinary High Adherence Silicone Primer. Cheap, does bits. Decent sized, something like that. Rub it together. Obviously I'm only gonna focus on the bottom half of my face and my forehead, everywhere that there's not makeup. I feel like this primer has a really nice tack to it, like stickiness. Then the Scandinavia Bridal Makeup Finish Spray. I'm gonna kind of cover my eyes when I do this. Setting spray as primer, I, I just don't know why I haven't done this sooner because everything is locked in. Like we are sealed. Foundation now, this is my, probably my favorite foundation ever. It's a big statement, but like kind of true. Low key, but like high key. This is so good. I always end up going back to this. The NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I'm in the shade Van, I'm not even gonna say it because every time I say you guys take the piss out of me. Thanks. <laughs> it's either this or the Hourglass Foundation Sticks. The, the finish of these, is beautiful and the way it makes your complexion look is just insane. You know when everything just like melts in, something's kind of gross. That is exactly what these do. If you want a nice drugstore alternative though, Revlon Color Stay. I, this is like an oldie but a goodie. I remember using this when I was like 12. <laughs> I'm in the shade 330 Natural Tan. This is amazing too. It's a bit more matte, um, but it's still beautiful on the skin for a drugstore foundation. Ooh. I had to drop something, didn't I? I'm gonna go in with the NARS today on A. I actually use a brush. It's just a flat top brush. It's by Sport Effects. It's their zero one brush. Shake it up, pump a little bit onto my brush. 
like look at the coverage on that i had some beasts on my skin <laughs> literally gone like madness but it looks so natural at the same time they just i don't know what like goodness they put in here but like nars have done it right the product goes on here and any remaining i work up into the concealer just so like blends in perfectly just in case you're not familiar with this foundation for something that isn't matte it lasts amazingly on my skin. I feel like all skin types will love this. You saw beautiful coverage, has a really nice sort of satin finish, works with other products beautifully. Basically, it's just like your dream, your dream product to be fair. Do you know what? It feels really lightweight too. I just feel like if you haven't gotten to this foundation yet, like just give it a go. I feel like you're not gonna, <laughs> you won't regret it. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like you'll fuck with it as much as I do. So of course I wanna go back in with my concealer just to kind of highlight and even everything out. Back in with the Estee Lauder Double Wear, a little bit on my chin, forehead, nose. Also here as well. This is like a great little lifting like tip. By the way, a Fabum drugstore dupe for this is like L'Oreal do a really, really nice concealer. Also NYX, the, um, I think I might actually have it here. Am I prepped enough? Absolutely. <laughs> the NYX Born to Glow, this is beautiful. Like the coverage that that gives, but without the thickness is mental. We're about to cream contour because I literally can't not do this. Primark foundation contour stick in caramel. I'm so low on this. Obviously I can't like draw it on, but I do just like to take a brush. This is the NYX 109 brush. It's like their glass brush. This is what we do. Pick it up, press it onto my skin. I actually think I prefer picking it up with the brush and then applying it because I feel like it's not so harsh. I feel like it kind of gives me time to, to blend and add onto the forehead too. And then I always put some on my chin here because I like to kind of shorten my chin. I just put it in the places where you kind of want to shadow and lift or bring in or whatever. Oh, look at this though. Beautiful. The formula is amazing. The colors be taking a smaller brush now. Obviously, I'm gonna dip in to do my nose. Two little lines at the side. Don't be afraid to kind of use your finger as well to blend it out. Sometimes the, the warmth from your fingers just really helps to blend. I always like to catch the tip as well. Make a little semicircle here. And it kind of creates that ball effect on the end of my nose. Obviously, depending on what you feel like you want to do will depend on what you do with your nose contour. The focus for me of my nose, bringing it in and lifting the tip up. So that's kind of where I've aimed. Now I'm going to start to set this all in place. I'm going to go back in with my Make a Revolution powder. Back in with a damp sponge. You guys know about the damp sponge. And I'm gonna take this down the sides of my nose, just like this. And then in the excess, press the powder into my skin. You can see already compared to this side, which is just de-shining and kind of setting everything in place. I'm gonna let this not bake, but like just chill for a little bit. Same as here. I kind of like to draw two little lines here. I feel like it helps to define my cheekbones without creating that like harsh line here. In the center of my face, I'm gonna carry on kind of pressing that powder into my skin. And then for the outer parts of my face, I just like to take a brush and some translucent powder. Basically set everywhere else. I don't like really to use a sponge on these parts because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it just takes me longer. I feel like the center is where it needs to look like real smooth, you know? Here I'm just roughly kind of setting. No big deal. Switching the brush around, I'm gonna take this side. Press this in, I don't swipe. You swipe the powder away, you might disturb any product. This as well, if you're oily, do this because you're kind of like pressing all the powder into your skin oh by the way this is the hourglass i don't know what this is it's their jewel ended brush i always get so many questions about this one of my favorite one of my faves. Bronzer now. So you guys know I've been loving kind of more of like a glowier base. Nothing crazy, like I don't want to look glittery or shiny or, or anything like that, but I do like products that add a bit of luminosity to your skin. This product, first of all, the packaging. Beautiful. Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess in, this is their Matte and Glow Bronzing Trio in Mirage. So there's more of like a cooler tone shade, a warmer tone, and this is more of like kind of a, it's sort of like iridescent, nothing crazy. On my Morphe M527, this is the best bronzer brush in the world, period. Grabbing it all. Start back up here. I'm kind of taking it in like a slightly curved shape, but I'm kind of moving my brush in little mini circular motions to blend. Really light pressure too, you don't need a lot. I'm gonna put that on my forehead. Pretty much everywhere that I put that cream contour, I'm gonna put this. And there's just like a slight iridescence to the skin. It just has this beautiful, like nothing crazy. It doesn't make me look shiny or oily, but it just adds, I don't know, it distracts from the palette that we put on the skin and it just looks beautiful and i feel like it's a perfect color as well it's not too cool tone not too warm then any excess is left on my brush kind of sweep over my entire face i feel like this is going to help to get rid of any harsh edges but don't add more product because you don't want to like bronze your entire face but well i kind of do don't i 
but like I don't. <laughs> Blusher, it really kind of depends on my mood, but I always wear it. L'Oreal Life's a Peach. This is one of my like favorite drugstore blushes ever because the color is just perfect. What it says on the tin, right? Like it's a peach shade. Or I go for this. It's a bit more expensive and a little bit of a different formula, but it's still beau. Don't mind this on my hand, by the way. Sauce. This is the Shiseido Minimalist Whip Powder Blush in Momoko 03. Like it's just like a kind of like a peach and orange. They're similar. This one has a little bit more pink in compared to this. And this is like a whipped mousse. Don't be scared by that though. When it blends on the skin, it's kind of like a dry formula. So you don't, don't worry. It's not gonna mess up your face. I think I'm gonna go for L'Oreal today. Loza. On a Morphe E3 brush. Be generous. I pounce my blush like this and I kind of focus it more on my cheekbone and then any excess a little bit on the apples of my cheeks. Don't know if you can see the difference from this side to this side. But everything looks a bit more lifted. I love blush. Highlighter, this one is like a newbie in my collection and I just, I'm obsessed. Worth every single penny, but I mean, if you are more on a budget, totally get it. I've said it before, but there are so many amazing drugstore highlighters out there. You don't need to break the bank for a highlighter. You just don't. I feel like brands just know what they're doing with that. This one though, the Bronze Goddess by Estee Lauder in this is the highlighting powder gelée in Heat Wave. Bitch. I'm sorry. Literally, I'm getting tingles. You'll see when I use this one I'm talking about. This is the Morphe M510 brush. just too good it's just like that is wet i'm sorry that is wet. also gonna hit my forehead but like, there's no there's no edges to this highlighter it just melts in this form is mad i don't know what they put in it but it just just hits different any excess on the brush i like to bring into the like corners of my mouth just here so that when you tilt your head the shine kind of follows through follows through you know what I mean? I'm just topping up my nose contour, by the way, with some Benefit Hula. Just a little bit. It's mainly there, to be fair, but... Lips now, guys. We're almost there. So, to start off the lip combo, I take the Rimmel... Rimmel... <laughs> Rimmel. Lasting Finish Lip Liner. This is in Cappuccino. This is that, like, dark nude. I feel like it contours your lips perfectly. I do really like the Morphe Sweet Tea Lip Liner. That probably is my all-time favourite, but... My stupid ass has lost it. Once I've outlined like this, I kind of start to, to fill in the edges. When we put on that middle lip shade, it's gonna help that to blend. Then for the middle, I'm taking my Morphe lipstick in first base. You guys probably know about this. I just tap it on. And then my favorite gloss, it is a bougie product, but when I tell you that this gloss is just, this gloss is just beautiful. So glossy, but lightweight. Not sticky and just glass. It's beautiful. It's the Dior Lip Maximizer, the Hyaluronic Lip Plumper in 013. Beautiful nude shade. <sighs> it literally just takes any lip from like zero to 100, I swear. I would repurchase this and repurchase it and repurchase it. Final step, I actually had some faux freckles on in that look. This, this is like a dupe for freck. The Lottie London Freckle Tint. This is amazing. What I actually like to do is take a little bit, dot a few on my finger, then dot it onto my nose. I don't know, I feel like this looks the most kind of like natural, sort of disperses them to begin with. I kind of like a rough layer of freckles and then I go in and add specifics. That way you get some that are lighter, some that are darker, and it looks a bit more natural like they are natural freckles. So I'd add a couple there. So I'm here. I focus on the nose and at the sides here. Fabulous. Of course, we want to lock everything in. I'm going to take my Scandinavia setting spray. And that is pretty much it. The recreation of that makeup look. It's pretty much the same. It's close enough. <laughs> so guys, we're finished. We've completed this look. What do you think? I said it in the intro, but like annoyingly, I don't think this is as good as the first time round, but... We tried. Make sure you check the description box though, because I will leave a list of all the products and colors and shades and everything that I'm in and also drugs alternatives. That is me done. So if you enjoyed, thumbs it up. No pressure, but subscribe as well. It's kind of a fun time over here if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. Stay safe, okay? And I'll see you all soon with a brand new video.